So we're going to take a step back from what we did last class. So last class, we derived from first principles a step-by-step -step intuitive confidence interval and showed you how it would work. This time, I'm going to be showing you another confidence interval. Uh, I'm not going to be deriving it step-by-step, -step, but I will put a link to the derivation that is step-by-step -step, uh, in the notes below. That being said, this is much more steady. This will require a little bit more statistical knowledge than I'm willing to dish out in this class because I don't think it's necessarily necessary. This confidence interval will be called the forwards confidence interval or the uh, normal name for it is the percentile, the bootstrap percentile confidence interval. So once again, you know, we always start with this, uh, maybe at one point in time I'll stop, but we've got a population. Uh, we are looking for a parameter theta of this population. In order to figure this out, we go ahead and we take samples. In this case, they're random samples. We get theta hat from this sample which is in this case, if this were average IQ, this would be average IQ of the sample. And then in this case, we go ahead and we don't look at the difference, but instead we look at the true sampling distribution. So we look at the sampling distribution of theta hat. So this is the sampling distribution of theta hat. Theta hat. In this case, you can think of this as the true sampling distribution of theta hat. So we look at two things on this sampling distribution. We go ahead and we find a point called Q high is what I'll call it, such that the area over here will be equal to 0 0.025. And we find another point called Q low, Q low, such the area here will also, let me just draw this area here, will also equal 0 0.025. And we're going to be using these themselves as the bounds for our confidence interval. So what do you mean? What I mean to say is that the probability, and this is an estimate, that Q sub low is less than true theta, which is also less than Q sub high, will be equal to one minus the area that we chose, in this case, 0 0.025 times two, times two. So basically, whatever the area in here is. And so this will actually go ahead and equal 95.95 or 95%, 95%. So in this case, this is a simple way to go ahead and construct a 95% confidence interval. You can change the values of 0 0.025 on both sides in order to construct intervals of varying size. So if instead we change them to 0 0.05, we could construct a 90% confidence interval. The cool thing about this is it's incredibly intuitive. We go ahead, we take the sampling distribution, we trim off the things that are super low extreme values, and we trim off the things that are super high extreme values. And we say, hey, the theta probably fits somewhere in the middle. Now, again, I'm not gonna be going into the true derivation of this. The true derivation is based on what's called the bootstrap central limit theorem. That being said, this should be a whole lot easier to remember than what we did before. So let's go ahead and use this in an example. 